Hello, welcome. My name is Miriam. I'm a family therapist. I've got a question for you. Would you like your children and teenagers to really take in the compliments and the praise that you give them so it makes a positive difference to their lives? Most of the parents and teachers that I work with praise young people regularly and they do it because they want to build their confidence, their self-esteem, they want to encourage them and motivate them and maybe even increase their resilience. But a lot of the children and especially teenagers don't really believe compliments and praise. They think we're saying it just because we are their parents and we love them or that we want to encourage them to work harder. And a lot of the times that is exactly correct. This is why we say what we say sometimes. So how can we praise in a way that our children can actually believe and take it in? I'm going to make five suggestions here. They've been helpful to hundreds of families that I've worked with. I think they're going to work for you as well. But you need to look at these ideas, tailor them to your style, to your children's situation, make them yours. Now my first suggestion is for you to be very specific with your praise. So instead of saying, well done, good job, or good boy, good girl, Thank you for doing this. Think what was it that they've done that merits this compliment? What is it that they've done well? And just say it. Sometimes you may want to think of a particular trait that you want to encourage in your children and direct your specific praise there. For example, with a primary school age child, you can say something like, every time we play this game, you come up with new ideas. You've got new characters, you've got new names for them, and you make up all these beautiful and interesting stories of what happens to them, that makes you quite creative. You know, creative people are people who've got plenty of ideas. Something like that. So this is very specific, very targeted. Obviously, you're not going to say this every day. But from time to time, if you give a compliment that is very specific and based in evidence, a child can't argue with you. Because a lot of the times when there are all these very general um, compliments, then children think, oh, she's just saying it, she's not really thinking about it. It's too general to make a difference. But if you base it in reality that anybody can see and your child can see, they're not going to argue with it. My second suggestion is to match your style and level of energy to their age and developmental stage. So with a little one, a toddler, you can clap and high five and say it's amazing and wonderful and they will love it. But try doing this with a teenager, it's not going to go very well. So obviously the older they are, the more you want to be matter of fact, downbeat, low energy, sometimes even Talk to them in passing. You, you pass by and say, oh, thank you for helping me clear the dishwasher. That's that. When you're giving compliments to all the children, don't expect or require eye contact. Um, don't go straight in their face. It's too confronting and they're too self-conscious. Just say, it, by the way, as a matter of fact, but think of what you're saying. If it is specific, it will sink in, even if your child's not showing it. Before going into my third suggestion, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, press the bell for notification, share with your friends or anybody who can benefit from it and give this video a like. Thank you. So third suggestion is to direct much of your praise to children's effort, not just their achievement. If your child's already achieving in an area, say they are good at drawing or at football or at math, Praise them, of course, there's no harm in it, but they already know that they're good at it, they're getting compliments and they're getting positive feedback from lots of people around them anyway. So this is not the area where they're desperate for your encouragement and your praise. The areas where you are not desperate for praise are the areas where they're not doing that well, where they need to put a lot of effort to achieve what other people just achieve easily. So. What can you praise? I mean, you can't really praise their achievement and say to them, oh, this is really great. You know, your drawing is beautiful when it isn't. What you want to do is specifically praise the details and the effort that they're putting into their work. So you can say something, I really like it. They're using different colors and I really like it that you're not giving up on it. I know that it's not easy for you, but you're trying again and again and this doesn't work. So you try something else. So I really like your perseverance. And so you praise their effort and they will 
likely, much more likely to put more and more effort and with effort and more and more attempts, there's likely to be achievement too. My fourth suggestion is to remember and give compliments even after the event in question is over. When things are happening, often we are busy, we're distracted, there are lots of people there. We may not want to compliment a child when their siblings are there or when their friends are there because it can make them self-conscious and embarrass them. So just try and remember and do it later. You can say something like, you know, I was thinking about what happened when your friends were here and I really liked that you were respectful to that and that person and you actually shared something with them or whatever it is that you want to say that's specific about what happened. Just say it later. Bedtime is a really good time for compliments. Mealtime is a good time for compliments. It may feel a little bit artificial because it's something you're not used to do, but if you start your sentence with something like, you know, I was just thinking about what happened yesterday and I realized that this has happened and I forgot to mention it to you, much of the chance that your child's going to take it in and believe it. My fifth and last suggestion is for you to help children compliment themselves and give themselves praise even if you're not there. So how do we do it? We think of a time where they've done something well. It could be a school project, it could be a play that went well, it could be a whole week for a teenager who usually gets in trouble at school where you haven't heard from his teachers or there were no complaints. So whatever this is, you can ask some questions. Um, how was it? What was difficult about achieving it? What was easy about it? So when you ask something like, what was hard about making this project? Your child may say, yeah, concentration, it was very long. It was the time that I thought it will never end. And then you can say, well, what does that make you? It makes you a person that can persevere. You can say that and they're much more likely to internalize it. And if you make it into a habit, they're going to ask these kind of questions themselves. And about the teenager, they're out in the playground. What did it take from you to not get into any fight? And they will say things like taking a deep breath, walking away, something like that. And you say, you know what? You've got your own strategies. It's much more likely that when the next week comes, and even if you don't mention it, they will say to themselves, yeah, I was able to walk away from that situation. And that's something that I'm developing in myself. So these are my five suggestions. Be specific, make the style and energy appropriate for the age, praise effort, not just achievement, Praise later, it's never too late for a compliment and get your children to praise themselves. If you like this content, please like, subscribe. Thank you very much and I'm going to see you in the next video.